I interviewed everyone before we had this conference to see what people actually wanted to get out of it. And the big thing I heard was people wanted to walk away with a deliverable. They wanted to actually work on their own projects and get something done that maybe they wouldn't get done otherwise. So my plan is to have everybody complete their own funnel and kind of carry the energy and everyone's expertise to actually get stuff done that when we're left to our own devices, we're just not gonna make it happen. So I'm gonna start with profitable funnels overview, just getting a little bit of mindset, the way that I think about funnels, what I think needs to be in place foundationally to make money with funnel. Um, and then we have a great lineup of speakers today to kind of take us through each piece. And one of the things is you don't have to work on your current project. We can start a new project. I'm hoping that in a couple of new businesses come out of this and maybe next year we go, remember when you created that last year at the, at the event. And I think to have a, a two family club come out of this event would be awesome. So I wanna walk through each business model because something I've learned is that not all business models are created equal and it's not a, an objective evaluation either. It depends on your situation and what your goals are. And like Carla's talking about exiting, not all of us are trying to exit right now. Some of us just wanna make some cash flow. So it really depends on what you are after. So we're gonna walk through each online major business model, software as a service, sourcing e-com products, coaching and info offer creation. Uh, JJ is gonna show you how to actually go into the market and figure out what's working already and adapt that for your business. Um, Trent's gonna show you how to borrow expertise or resources if you feel like you don't have those things right now. And that's a great way to speed up the success of your business. I'm gonna talk about innovative messaging. So how to actually break through the noise, especially in a saturated market. And then Leslie is gonna show us how to put this all together so we don't get overwhelmed, so we stay on track and we actually execute, which is without that, none of it matters. So that's really the goal is to execute this week and not just sit here and learn stuff and take notes. And you know, my notebook sitting over there is full of funnel hacking live notes. I almost guarantee I never looked at those again after I took them. So we really wanna make sure we leave room this week for implementation. And that might mean some late night uh, work sessions, but we're gonna try and get it done. So day one, the goal is really decide on your business model and create a basic offer. We're really just gonna decide SaaS, e-com, coaching, info, and who do I wanna serve and what's my basic offer for them. Day two, we're actually gonna create your landing page headline, uh, a basic funnel, and we're gonna write an ad, which in my opinion is the most important part of starting a new business, because the ad really lays out the pieces, who you're going after, what problem you're solving for them, how you speak to them in a unique way, and how you get their attention. And without the attention, you have nothing. So this is where most people, I, where I see most people get stuck is on the ad because it's a little more complex. It's not just step one, two, three. Uh, we're also gonna talk about the hero's journey, which is very important with storytelling for marketing. Day three, we'll create a daily, weekly plan to finish launching your funnel and maintain key business activities. As I always say, your life doesn't change until you change something that you do every day. So we wanna make sure you walk away from this knowing the habits that you have to have to actually succeed with your new funnel. So how are we gonna get this done? I don't know everything about funnels. I'm not Russell Brunson. I still have tons of flops. I launch products that completely bomb, uh, but I have done now over $3.5 million in sales through funnels, mainly in the last two years. And so this is what I've learned about it. Human beings are always gonna take the path of least resistance. I actually learned this through screenwriting. In a movie, no character is willingly gonna do more work than they're forced into. And so usually what happens is stakes are created, whereas if they don't do something, something bad is gonna happen. And so what I wanna to talk to you guys about in funnels is only ever worry about the next step. If you look at the whole mountain and you're staring at the peak the whole time we're working on these funnels, you're gonna try and solve future problems that you don't need to worry about yet. You're gonna get overwhelmed, you're gonna get have too much complexity in your business and you're not gonna get it done. So we wanna just focus on step that's right in front of us. So just one step, two step, three step, and do it over again. And what we're gonna do by doing that is we'll actually force ourselves into precarious situations where now it's more painful not to do the work than to actually do it. And that's gonna make it easy to get stuff done. So this is gonna create the stakes I'm talking about where the path of least resistance is actually getting it done. And so what this means for us is if you sold a coaching package, you now have to figure out how to fulfill it. Where most people might try and figure out their exact curriculum ahead of time, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna sell it and realize it's easier to create an effective coaching curriculum than to let your clients down. So we're gonna put ourselves into that situation where we have to get ourselves out. 
So if you promised you could raise funds for a deal, and I know Trent does this, you're gonna figure out how to get it done. And so you promise ahead of time, then figure it out. So it's easier to get the deal done than face the humiliation for not fulfilling your promises and the loss of money for not doing the deal that's already underway. You see it's right in front of you, you just reach out and grab it now that it's there. So uh, something Grant Cardone said, which I actually really liked, was screw under-promising and over-delivering. It's only by over-promising you'll find out what you're capable of. Hmm. So this is our basic, all funnels are, are fairly basic when you break them down into their parts. Again, ad creative, one of the most important things, if you look at companies like Harmon Brothers, sometimes they'll create one new ad and it will 10x a business with one three minute advertisement. So one of the most important parts of our funnels, then we have usually an opt-in or a sales page and then we have an offer. So we wanna see, can we get their attention? Can we get them to make a micro commitment to us in order to get more from us? And then can we actually get them to buy in order to solve their problem? And so a lot of times people think about all these different traffic sources and being in all different social media platforms. But when it comes down to it, these are all just ways to get attention and we're putting them all into one landing page. So that core message and that core landing page is the foundation for everything else. If you want to, you can add all these social media networks, uh, but you can also do it, you know, you can have a multi-million dollar funnel on one network with one advertisement. So don't worry about the landing page until traffic is figured out. Until we know we can create an ad, we don't need to create a landing page. And again, one great ad can be worth millions of dollars in traffic. We have one ad we've been running for 15 months straight on YouTube without changing it. Don't worry about the offer until your leads are figured out. If you can't get people to opt in, chances are you're not going to be able to get them to buy. So let's see if we can get people to opt in before we worry about perfecting our sales page or our phone script or things like that. We don't need to worry about the details until we get people started on that slippery slope. So the right way to launch Funnel this weekend is just one step at a time, force yourself into, somebody fixed my slides wrong, force yourself into delivering. The wrong way would be trying to have the whole thing figured out ahead of time and not getting started on your ad because you say, well, I don't know how I'm gonna build this software. You can worry about putting the software after you evaluate demand. And then again, the right way is one step at a time, act out of the necessity to avoid pain. Mm. So this week, these are the three cardinal rules of profitable funnels that I have for us. Number one is master your communication. It's probably the most important thing. If you can do this, which we'll talk about later, you can be the Oprah of your business. You can be the one front and center doing the important stuff and you can have somebody else fill in for almost any other role in your business. We want to provide a solution in health, wealth, or relationships, and we want to sell painkillers not vitamins. So again, the highest value activity, without a doubt, is your ability to communicate. If I look at a saturated market, the people that are on top are there because they can communicate better than the people that are not doing as well. So specifically, we want to communicate innovative solutions to painful problems. So that's something new and different. That's the new opportunity we learn about in the ClickFunnels community. Uh, but a lot of times that might mean just speaking differently about the problem. There's so many ways to communicate, to innovate in business. We can innovate with technology, we can do it with operations, or we can do it with our messaging. A lot of times online business, basic online business, if we're not Elon Musk building completely new technology, what we're doing is we're innovating with our messaging. So we're going to talk about innovative messaging later today. Uh, rule two is, again, health, wealth, and relationships really are the three big niches. I always think that we can just break this rule, the basics, Anytime I try to do that, I fail. So we really want to focus on problems in these three categories. And let me show you what I mean, how you can apply this to like a random business. So Dan and I work on Tread School together. It's an online snowboard education. And here are some of the intake forms from Tread School. I want to be better than my snowboarding uncle. It's my number one goal. Uh, I want my fellow snowboard instructors to say, when did you get so good? I want to shred as well as my more advanced friends. So I would say this is a relationship offer. It's mainly about status. And people are embarrassed to be worse at snowboarding than their friends. They're embarrassed to not be as good as they think they should be because they're athletic in other areas of their life. And so it's really about communicating to them that we can help with their problem with status. And so, so for some reason, this is discouraging to some people. They think uh, you know, snowboarding shouldn't be about status. But if you really look at people's subconscious mo motivations, almost everything is about status, as we've learned before. So why are these the three master niches? It's because they are the most painful and people act on pain. So bad or non-existent relationships, poor health and no money are pretty much 
some of the most painful problems we're experiencing in life, and they're the problems that people will gladly hand over money to solve. And you see that with just how big these niches are. And rule number three is sell painkillers, not vitamins. And what that means is, again, we're talking about stakes. There must be a consequence to your customer for not finding a solution. And so if they just keep living their life just as they've been living, they haven't used your product, and their life stays perfectly fine and nothing bad happens, <clears throat> chances are they're gonna say, I can just do without it. And you're not gonna have this insatiable demand for your product that you really need to make the economics of the business work. So just think about it on a daily basis. If you miss your vitamins in the morning, you probably don't even notice. The next day you wake up and you, you might take your vitamin the next day, but nothing bad happened the day before because you did not take your vitamin. If you miss your painkillers and you have chronic pain, you might lie awake in pain all night. And so that's really what we want our businesses to address is a problem that people are lying awake at night thinking about. They're in pain and they'll do anything to get out of it. So those are, that's nice to have rather than must have. If your product is just a nice to have, that's gonna be the death of you. You'll get a couple customers in the beginning but demand will die off after that, and you'll wonder why you'll think your ads aren't good enough or you need to learn more Facebook tactics, but it's usually because of fundamentals like this. So we're gonna start with the pain with our offers later today. I guess I have four rules. Rule number four, <laughs> no such thing as a confused buyer. So that again comes back to communication, those who master communication, fundamentals, consistency, and catchy messaging when pretty much every time. So I don't know how I ended up four, but those are the three big ones. Master your communication, provide a solution in wealth, health, or relationships. And again, we can take pretty much any niche and turn it into a wealth, health, or relationship problem. Uh, it doesn't have to be like, you know, you don't have to be directly in the, in the dating niche. You can be in something and still have a relationship offer that's not related to directly to relationships. Uh, and then again, sell painkillers, not vitamins. Those are things that people will notice if they do not get their fix, okay? So now I just want to go into why people don't buy. If we've addressed these fundamentals correctly and people are not buying from us, it's usually because they don't trust us, they don't believe us, and they don't think it will work for them. So this is really why we have a funnel, is to overcome these three things. Because strangers on the internet uh, are extremely skeptical, they don't owe us anything. We're just somebody popping into their newsfeed, presenting an offer. So they have every reason not to believe us. So we're going to try to overcome these three issues with our funnel. Uh, if people don't trust us, we want to bond with them, form a relationship with them. We do that by being vulnerable, telling stories, and sharing experience. So if you ever meet someone at a party, they tell you an amazing story right off the bat. Uh, it's much easier to feel like you know that person and to start to trust them than if uh, you're just making small talk. People generally don't believe us. Uh, again, a reasonable assumption. So we're gonna make very strong money back guarantees. We can use things like action-based guarantees depending on what niche or product we have to mitigate the downside. Um, social proof, one of the strongest forces is literally just showing that your product works by showing people who have used it and gotten the result that you've promised. And then client stories are different than social proof. It's it's not just saying, here's this person that got the result. We talk about the pain that they struggled with before, um, what else they had tried before they tried our product, and then how our product ended up changing everything for them. So it's really telling the story. And again, people learn uh, much better through story than they do just straight facts. And if people don't think it will work for them, uh, we're just going to obsessively focus in our marketing on our clients' objections and internal obstacles, uh, as well as ex external obstacles, to really shift beliefs. So our funnel really needs to stay focused on our prospect, uh, the issues that they're dealing with and their story. And we might tell our story, but we'll talk about later. What we're really doing is we're telling their story and we're providing a happy ending for them. So let's say we got that all dialed. How do we know if people want our product? If we come up with a new offer idea today, how do we know is somebody going to want this before we do uh, market research? How should we think about this? This is the way I think about it, as a slippery slope. So we start off really small, or we can think of it like a snowball, start off really small, start to build momentum, and uh, it gets bigger and bigger. So again, we really wanna know, can we even get people to stop what they're doing and read our ad? Like people have so many options for their attention. 
They can do an unlimited amount of things. They can watch Netflix. Um, can we get them to stop and choose our ad over everything else? We usually do that by speaking to their pain or telling an interesting story. Can we get them to opt in and take the next step? Can we get them to watch a presentation or visit an order form? If we can do all that, let's see if we can get them to buy. If we've got them that far, chances are we can come up with an offer that they're interested in. Um, and if we can't get them to buy, let's see if we can give it away for free. That's never a bad uh, choice. That's like what Carla's doing is let's give this away for free to big players and then we can snowball that into social proof, testimonials, having the big names in the market that everybody recognizes and then get people to pay for it after that. If we can't give it away for free, we, we missed the mark. We need to go back to the drawing board. So people do not want to part with their money. They really don't, unless it costs them more to not take you up on your offer and then they will gladly do it. Just think if somebody pulls up in a Lamborghini today, brand new with title, and they say, uh, I'll give you this Lamborghini for $10,000. I'm sure every one of us in this room could find $10,000 to get the deal done because we know that Lambo's worth so much more. So it's really just a matter of value when it comes down to getting people to part with their money. And, and a big part of this is showing them the cost of an inaction. So this goes a little bit deeper. Um, so this has been called like kick them in the bruised knee and it can sound a little bit brutal, um, but it's really not and I'm gonna tell you why. But, but basically what this means is we need to point their pain out to them and then we need to rub it in and make it worse than it is right now. And uh, the big reason here is that most people are, you know, the, the general public is basically too numbed out with social media, drugs, drinking, entertainment, drama, to ever really feel their pain. They'll do anything to avoid themselves, sitting with their own thoughts, dealing with their own problems. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, this is a massive generalization, but in every person's life, mine definitely included, there are areas where this is happening. So most people in certain areas will just never, ever change, and they'll just act out the same patterns over and over again for their whole life. So getting them in touch with their pain is actually the best thing we can do for them. It's a gift to them in the long run. Not in the short run. It might be painful in the short run. They might not want to do it. In the long run, they're going to be so much better off, and they're going to think back to when they met you, when they were exposed to you, and that changed everything for them. So think of somebody who just ignores their health problems. We probably all have older relatives or parents who they'll just sweep things under the rug and they just ignore it. They don't even want to talk about it. And then it's too late. It's gotten so bad that they can't address it anymore. Um, we see this in addiction a lot. You know, people need to hit rock bottom before they say no more. It really needs to get so bad that they can't tolerate it. So trauma produces growth. That's what causes us to change. Um, so we actually have to speak to the trauma of our customer. So this, this, um, this week, we're not gonna launch a whole multi-million dollar business. We're not gonna launch a two hour webinar or anything like that. But we can come up with our core messaging and our core offer and that's, as I said, it's the most important thing. Everything else stems from that. So let's see if we can find a problem and get attention for a solution to that problem. So creating profitable funnels overview, <clears throat> only focus on the next step, create stakes for yourself, for your customers, so you take action so they take action, figure out traffic before building a landing page, figure out leads before building your offer, communicate using innovative messaging, which we will talk about today, uh, build a funnel in health, wealth, or relationships, sell painkillers, not vitamins, build trust, in bonds with funnels, proof, stories, and guarantees, and make them feel the pain of not taking your offer and staying where they are, knowing that this is ultimately in their best interest. Anybody who wants to ignore you can, but for those of you who need help, this is what's gonna get them to stop and pay attention. So the goal, let's see if we can get attention, let's see if we can get click-throughs, let's see if we can get opt-ins, we can get all that done this week easily. If we put ourselves in that position and we have people opting into our offer, we're gonna be very motivated to sell them something. So, Let's just make it through that, and then we'll set up a plan to convert those leads to sales after everybody leaves. Uh, the last part of this presentation is the online business model breakdown. So we could go out this week, and we actually could make sales in coaching, uh, potentially in info products. So all these business models have their own strengths and weaknesses. As Carla said, SaaS is like an incredible model because, well, we'll walk through each one, but... Um, depending on your situation, you're going to want to pick a different business model, depending on what, how much capital you have, how much time you have, how much you need to make money right now, what your lifestyle look like. 
So I'll just run through each of these. Software as a service, capital requirements are high and the speed to cash is low. So most people are not gonna get into this business as beginners, um, but across the board, other than those factors, it's an amazing business model. It's high margins, high scalability, um, high level of independence for the owner. It's not tied to you as a guru. Uh, you can easily sell it for a very high multiple. It's recurring revenue. It's just a, an awesome business model. Uh, drop shipping, which I think everybody here knows what it is, but it means the manufacturer ships directly to your customer rather than you holding inventory. Capital requirements are low for drop shipping, but you do need credit. So, you know, the payment terms are great, but you will still end up using a substantial amount of credit to finance your, your ad spend and your purchases, but you get that money back right away from your customers. So no capital requirements, really high speed to cash, you get paid right away. The downside of this, extremely low margins, um, pretty competitive. It's, it's very scalable if you have a, a mass market product, high independence, you can pretty much do it from anywhere because they're shipping straight to your customers and you can sell drop shipping businesses. People love to buy them. E-commerce would be when you develop your own product, you actually order the inventory. That's gonna have high capital requirements. I saw a sock company for sale this week and during peak season, they have $700,000 in inventory. So you definitely have to have some capital to have a massive e-commerce company. They were doing millions in sales a year, so it's probably fine. Um, medium speed to cash. Tasha's going through this right now, designing her own products. Um, finding the right manufacturer. So it's not like you're gonna make money on day one with this kind of stuff. Uh, Ecom, the margins, I have low, but it really depends if you have a luxury brand, the margins can definitely be a lot higher. Um, super scalable with mass market products. Medium independence, you gotta have the inventory stored somewhere, um, but very sellable. Info products, you can start with no money. You can get paid pretty much immediately. A lot of times we need a sales page or something like that if we're not just doing coaching. Um, medium margins, depending on how competitive your industry is. If you get into a, a blue ocean with info products, you can have super high margins. If you're in just like the reddest of oceans with tons of competitors, it's pretty brutal out there. You gotta be really good at messaging. Um, high independence, you can do from anywhere in the world, work from anywhere, and mm -hmm. uh, low sellability. Usually it's based on the business owner, and as soon as the business owner steps out, nobody really wants to buy it because it doesn't work with the guru. Coaching, we got low capital requirements. We could go out there, we can start coaching businesses today. Um, high speed to cash, especially if you have something unique and valuable to offer. We can have very high margins. Um, and as we scale this, I say low to medium. It can actually be very scalable depending on how you set it up. There are mass market coaching companies out there and the margins are obviously gonna dip as we scale. Uh, medium independence, a lot of times you do still have to be on the phone with people. If you love doing that, that's awesome. If not, um, it's not the best business. And again, coaching, depending on how you set it up, can be very sellable or not at all. And then we have done for you services. One of the easiest things for beginners to offer low capital requirements, high speed to cash, get paid right away, high margins. Um, usually your time is, is tied to how much you make, so it's, it's not very scalable. It's not very independent because you actually have to show up and work. Um, but these are generally pretty sellable businesses, especially if you systemize everything. So that's the breakdown. You know, the one thing I noticed for me this week is um, SaaS just across the board looks awesome as long as you have capital and patience. In the end, like Carla says, she wants to exit in three years. If she does it properly, I don't know if that, you know, I don't know if that product is gonna scale the way she wants to do or not. It, it could scale to amazing heights or not at all. But if it does, that could set her up like for the rest of her life. She could be um, never have to worry about money again, depending on how big of a user base she acquires. Other factors to consider, your current area of expertise, what are you well set up for right now? So you can just jump in and get going without any additional education, without bringing on other experts. How competitive is it? Usually it depends on the niche, not really as much the business model. Um, do I enjoy this today? And will I still enjoy it in six months? Because if you get burned out in six months and you don't want to do it anymore, uh, you're just gonna let the business fail. Is this something I can obsess over? So curiosity is a big one for me. Am I gonna be curious day to day? Do I want to keep doing this? Can I find partners if I need additional expertise or capital? Um, how volatile is this business model? Is the industry growing? This one's extremely important, especially if you want to sell. We want a fast growing industry, um, high selling multiples and things like software. And depending on your risk tolerance, um, you might pick a different business model. So just a caveat here, while we ultimately need to start our business with our customer, um, John's gonna go over this, I think maybe a couple other people today as well in the customer research. Um, it's just useful to find what we want to avoid 
getting trapped by in our business and set ourselves up with a life that we're actually going to like. So it really does start with the customer, but we have to we have to figure out what we actually want. So our goal for this exercise is to find your goal for your business based on what is important to you right now, what's important in six months a year. Um, one way that we do this is describe your dream day from when you wake up to when you go to sleep. So where do you wake up, look around the room, what does it look like, who are you with, what do you do after you roll out of bed, what do you eat for breakfast, who are you hang out that day, how much time do you put into work, do you have a team, do you not have a team, are you able to travel, whatever it is that's important to you. So, um, I don't know where we're out of time, but I'm gonna have people walk through this exercise, at least briefly. Decide on your business model based on what fits your goals and your lifestyle, and then decide on just a broad niche. We'll get deeper into this later today, but health, wealth, or relationships, just a hypothesis you can always change later. So, uh, dream day, business model, niche. And then I was just gonna have everybody go around after five to 10 minutes and just give us real quick, and we'll get into this detail later in the week. All right. Wants to share. Looks like he's ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>